cabbage. He's got cabbage from a recipe he tried early in the week, so he's going to make something of it. He begins by preheating the oven to 375 degrees. Next, he fetches bacon, because bacon is the basis of any low-carb diet, unless you're vegetarian. He slices it into small pieces, strips more like it, and makes sure they're aerated, because that increases its aerodynamic. Into a pan they go. With the stove top on, he scatters them, in order to cook evenly. And as always, he is perplexed by the onion. He takes a gamble and cuts it in half. Still perplexed, he looks for instructions underneath. Peels and chops. This goes into a bowl. Now it's time for the cabbage. First the white, and then the purple, which is actually referred to as red. This too confuses him. As you can tell, he's got two styles of cuts. The temperature timer goes off and he freezes, not knowing what to do. For the white cabbage, he remembers to remove the core. It's a rather stiff and unpleasantly edible part. He cuts the cabbage into long strings. They look kind of like spaghetti, or a hurricane model. He combines them and salts them. The salt will begin to pull out the water, because cabbage is very water dense. The bacon has generated a lot of grease. Too much, in fact. So he removes some and pours it in his jar of bacon. Once it's done, he adds the onions. He's not making French onion soup, simply lightly browning the onions. He takes the cabbage and puts them on a baking dish for easy transfer. Because if not, there'll be a mess everywhere. Back at the stovetop, he adds a little bit of heat with some red pepper, some black pepper, and, of course, a quick stir. Then, he begins to add the cabbage, slowly at first, and mixes. Eventually, he adds more, and more, and all of it. With a nice pat, he lets it sit for a second, before adding more salt, and more pepper, and some paprika. Not too much, so as to overpower this flavor. He folds in slowly, so as not to spill any more. After letting it sit for a few minutes, it's ready. Back on the counter, he takes his baking dish and pours it in. Why so slowly? Who knows? And then the sour cream. He dollops quite a bit on the top, and employing the tried and true classic spin method, he spreads it around evenly. Then, adding some shredded mozzarella, he pauses to admire his work, and then continues adding cheese. And because he has some pecorino romano, he adds some like a frantic maniac. Yes. This is optional. Into the oven it goes, but before he realizes the oven rack is not in the right position. I always do this before the oven is hot. This reduces the chance of injury, fire, and nuclear hazard. And into the middle rack it goes. Roughly 35 minutes at sea level, and he's off. 20 minutes before it's done, he takes out some sausage. To be precise, 
from the spicy kielbasa. He slices down the metal almost as if he was to butterfly them. But he's not. Because he's not cutting all the way through. Then cutting at diagonals the traditional sausage cut, he cuts both. And they look like little camel hooves. This is for a specific reason. And he drops one on the floor. Five second rule. It's still good. And Jake's not here. He spreads them out on the stovetop so they bake evenly and turns them occasionally to keep them nice and roasted. The slit prevents them from curling up. And now it's time to plate. Much like bacon, he places them on a paper towel to dry the grease, just as his timer is up. And the cabbage looks magnificent. Temporarily, he places it on the stove top and continues the sausage. Off the pan goes and in the baking dish comes. After performing art with the sausage, he cuts the cabbage. And with the finger, he makes a sort of cabbage lasagna. Three layers high, three layers deep. Can't eat that for the picture. Try it here. And with that, he decides to try the cabbage. Reminder that it's hot. Ah, hot. Very hot. <laughs> and struggles with the cheese. If you like this video, share, like, and subscribe. And until next time, eat well. <laughs>